participating in tonight's discussion are four students from four different countries, all of whom have very strong ideas on this subject of whether or not American children have too much freedom. Let me introduce them to you now. First, here is Nasreen Ahmad from Pakistan. Nasreen, show us how you use that pretty veil of yours, will you? Like this. Ah. From Nigeria, West Africa, is Minjiva Karibo. Minji uh, finds our food so tasteless, I'm afraid, that she carries a bottle of rubber around with her in her purse all the time so she can season it to taste. Next is Nak Chung Peck from Korea. Nak Chung's been down at the George School in, Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania this week. And finally, Ava Leitinen from Finland. May I say something, Mrs. Wallace? Yes, go on, Ava. When I came here, I can tell you I was rather well prepared for everything I should see. But I didn't know there would be so much smile. When I walk in those schools where I have visited, I can just feel the friendliness flow against me. Oh, I want to say something, too. <clears throat> oh, you just mentioned that I have been vis visiting the George School in Pennsylvania. I was very much impressed by their Quaker meetings. I was, I was deeply moved by, the, by their silence, simplicity, and piety. It was a little bit amazing to find things like those meetings in this noisy, busy, and co complicated country. Well, I'm awfully glad you had that experience, Dr. Chung. I wish all of you could have. Now, to begin tonight's discussion, uh, particularly after what Nasreen has said with such uh, vehemence, uh, maybe you ought to each tell us what is the main contrast between the amount of freedom teenagers have in your country and the amount they have here. Do you want to start, Nasreen? Yes, I think I will, Mrs. Waller. I find a very sharp contrast here between the students here and the students in my country. I feel that um, even in their domestic life and in their school life, they are, people are more reserved and more, uh, well, more reticent, and they don't lay so much emphasis on social life as the American students. And they, I mean, you always have things like dating and going out with people and boyfriends and things like that, which we don't have at all. And I find that, uh, well, I hear of girls saying, oh, we're going up to weekends to Dartmouth or to Yale or Princeton. I think there's something unheard of in Karachi to go off alone for a weekend with a boys' college. It's something quite surprised me. How about you, Minji? Well, as Eva said, I think in some cases American children don't have enough freedom. They are not allowed to show up their individual qualities. You know, every girl thinks it's fashionable to go um, dating and some girls even don't speak the truth about dates and they think it's fashionable to tell lies about going on dates during weekends when as a matter of fact they sat at home all the time. Well, why do you suppose they said they had dates when they didn't? Because it was the fashion and they weren't free to uh, express their own opinion. They wanted to be in the no. Well, I, I disagree both uh, you, uh, you Nasreen and you Minjiva. <coughs> uh, of course, the American children do have very much freedom, and some sometimes uh, it may seem too much. But uh, you cannot judge the amount of freedom the American children have by your standard. I mean, uh, of course, uh, I come from Korea, and Korea is very much, very much different from America. And I see well, such an informality between the ages or between the sexes. I get rather shocked. But the, but the fact that it is shocking does not necessarily mean that it is, I mean, it is not good for them. And, well, I, I don't think that the, you know, the... Well, Peg, I don't think it's good for Pakistanis because uh, all our life we haven't had freedom, the girls and boys there. And if we were given suddenly this amount of freedom, I'm afraid you would hear of fearful consequences. That, that is right. I mean, uh, the fact that the, the freedom uh, of the Americans uh, is good for the American children does not necessarily mean that you can, uh, you can apply it to Pakistan. That's right, but, we cannot. But the fact that you can apply it to the, uh, to the Pakistan children does not necessarily mean that it is bad for Americans. I agree you see? With you, In some saying. respects, it is bad for the Americans. I'll tell you where. In the respect, well, where it concerns the respect between a, a, a student and a teacher, or yes. a student and a, and 
and his or her parents, I find that the students here with their relationship towards the teachers, I feel it's a bit too informal. I, I should think that a student and a teacher, well, a student is made to, is brought up with the idea of respecting the teacher. A teacher is somebody to, to look up to. Wait a minute, Nasrin. But at the same time, did you notice that the teachers and the parents didn't seem to mind how the children behaved to them? I think if they don't mind, then American children don't have too much freedom. After all, it depends on the reaction of the adults, and the grown-ups here don't seem to mind a bit. Oh, they do. I'm, I'm sure I, they do. I found, for example, just today when I came to New York in the station, I spoke with a lady. I don't know who she was, but um, she... Oh, we spoke about very many things. And then she... I spoke about this Herald Tribune and uh, our forum and so on, and then I said we shall have a discussion this night on TV about American children. Oh, they have such, so much freedom, quite too much freedom. They, they never respect our ideas. They never, never do what we want them to do. Excuse she me. said she was one of the grown-ups. She said so. Well, did you ask her who gave the children the freedom? Did they snatch it themselves? Well, that's quite conventional, as you say, Minji. It's something uh, which the Americans here have to do. I mean, if one parent is strict with his child and the other parents aren't, the, other, the, the child will say, well, look at the Jones family. The parents aren't strict there. Why are you strict with me? It's something quite conventional. Well, you, you mean that it's just a few people who sort of spread the freedom all over America? Oh, no, it's all over. Well, uh, it, it is true that uh, in many cases, American children are less than respectable to their teachers and parents. But uh, you cannot, I mean, you cannot... Uh, visualize a utopia in, um, in America, but, you know, uh, in some ways, the freedom can, uh, the freedom can, they, they enjoy, may, may seem too much to you, but did you not notice, notice that how smoothly the democracy is working in America because of the, the, the training they have their freedom from the young ages? Yes, they I mean, do, true, but, the but democracy is working rather, rather smoothly in Finland, too, without yes. this, Demo this democracy. Democracy is practiced all over the world, Peg. But well, it's practiced differently. But did well, you... We, uh, we mean a little bit different thing with democracy. No, we're yeah. getting off the point. Now, now did you think of the freedom. origin of them? I mean, the people here, their background, you see how they had to struggle hard to get a country like America. And everybody had to work very hard indeed. And do you think if uh, the children were kept um, on that rigid rule and they weren't allowed to strike out for themselves, do you think they could have got a country like America as it is now? Well, maybe so, but that doesn't mean any other country is not working hard. You can't say that Pakistan and India are not working hard. No, I didn't say so. Then I'm just trying to tell you that, well, the amount of freedom children in America have is just good for them. It's not too much, and nor is it too little. I little. think it is good sometimes. Yeah. But you must be intelligent enough to use the freedom. Exactly. Because if you are, if you don't, uh, there's something wrong in your brain. So then you come to things like youth crimes and you don't you don't know you 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 do something wrong you are always allowed to do what you want so excuse me just a minute David before we get on to juvenile delinquency I wish you'd say a bit more about the schools that you've been in does the lack of respect that students show teachers affect their ability to learn No. in public schools Mrs. Waller yes how does it Nasri? because the boys and girls are always talking to each other and you see, sometimes when the teacher is noticing a girl and a boy sort of whispering to each other something about their day tonight or, oh, some meeting secretly at some place, something like that. And you see, from going from one class to another, they hang around the corners talking to each other, the boys and girls. And that's how they miss at least 10 or 15 minutes of their period. But I find that the private schools are a bit stricter, and uh, you can learn a bit more there. But I wouldn't say that in public schools. I didn't find that. I, th I think there are rather many schools here, especially p private schools, where the rules are strict and you have to follow them. But usually, for example, in my schools, we have more respect for teachers, individual teachers. We stand up every day, we speak to them, we stand up when they come into the classes and so on. And I have found out here, for example, one of the students, maybe he or she,
spoke to one of his teachers in a way which could have thrown out him from my school. Just uh, there, we are, we are allowed to disagree with our teachers, but the way of disagreeing, you can disagree politely, yes. is taught to us. Oh, but does the freedom... What about the relationship between American students with their teachers and the relationship between you and your teachers at home? Is it very different? It yes, is. it is it definitely is. Ours are very more different. It's not so informal as it is here. Yeah. Well, but which is the best learning situation? Well, for learning situation, I think I should suggest my type, Mrs. Waller, but I feel that this, this informal relationship is good. I like that. But I think uh, we would learn much more better if the, if the schools were segregated. What do you mean by segregated? <laughs> well, boys and boys schools. Um, and boys ah, and we sometimes mean a different thing <laughs> no. by segregation. <laughs> you, you would prefer a girl's schools so, yes. and boys' schools mm -hmm. instead of co-education. Yeah, I, uh, I, no, I don't agree. I don't... Uh, <laughs> no, today, to, I mean, the, your education is not confined in, in your school only. I mean, well, you, you, you talk about the relationship between the opposite sexes. Uh, <clears throat> if, if you go to street, street, you can find, you know, the advertisement of the movie or... You, 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 can, you can control them, so you have to, you have to, to train the youth to, I mean, not to be... Uh, well, you can train them separately, Peg. Mm. No, you, you can train you, the girls separately, you can train, train the boys separately. It's not necessary, you should train them together. It's sometimes, uh, well, it's quite embarrassing to a girl when you uh, train, train them together. Well, I, I wonder if it is possible to, I mean, to teach them the relation between the uh, boys and girls without, uh, without, I mean, having them together. I think it's possible. It becomes a bit too embarrassing for a girl, and sometimes a boy too, if you, if you mean the facts of life. Are you talking about a Pakistani girl, or are you talking about American I'm girl? speaking of an Eastern girl. I see. In general. Well, uh, let's, let's not try to, uh, then why do to see apply? everything in, in, in you, our own point of view. I mean, in, in Korea, <coughs> uh, we, we are, I think we are a little bit more respectable to our teachers and uh, our philosophy taught us to uh, respect the elder people and to obey them. So naturally, uh, in our uh, schools, e even in our schools, the active discussions or uh, you know, sharp questions were never encouraged. But the fact, that, the fact is uh, by, I mean, you know, Things may, may seem, sometimes things may seem uh, too informal, but being informal and discussing and, and uh, experiencing things in freedom, you can learn a lot more and the knowledge can be more practicable and more, more I mean, uh, more useful. Excuse me, I want to interrupt again just one minute. Nasreen, I hear you've been into several arguments with girls here about whether or not it's a good idea to have parents choose your husband for you. Have you changed your ideas on that? No, I'm, I'm afraid I haven't, Mrs. Waller. I still feel that arranged marriages are more successful than the love marriages. At least they've proven so in, in Pakistan and India and all over East. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have such a low percentage of divorce in Pakistan and India and other Eastern countries, which I think is uh, the main factor here, because they have love marriages and, and not arranged marriages. I, I don't think Americans will agree with me. Well, let me go on now to the point that Ava raised uh, in the beginning and that Minji has just touched on. I think you ought to tell us a little more in detail, Ava, what you meant when you said sometimes Americans don't have enough freedom. Can you explain that? I mean, for example, from a point of view of girls. Here, it seems to me that girls who don't use lipstick, who don't go dating, who doesn't do things like those general things that everyone do, does here. She, she's considered a little bit odd. Isn't that true? I think so too. She, if she doesn't wear a jumper and a sk skirt in the school, a new jumper and a new skirt every day, she's considered. Well, and that's something wrong mm. with her. And they are not, they are, they have not this, uh, let's say, they don't go on take a long walk alone, or sit, sit one evening just alone at their home and they, they reading have, some books or so on. They don't do... I haven't met one who... They don't have do time to think about themselves, to yes. sort of analyze themselves. 
to pause and to wonder what's going on. Mm -hmm. oh, but what has that got to do with freedom? They don't have too much freedom to do that because they're all, the, all the other uh, people around them do it. You if have... not, <coughs> if they don't do that, so they, they are well, not quite, they are me, not normal. Let me, let me say my point, um, Mrs. Waller. Uh, <coughs> I, I told you that I was in George school, and I had quite a leisurely time there, and I, I loved to take a walk around the campus. It, was, it, has a, it, it had a very beautiful scenery. And I wondered the, why the American uh, youth cannot, uh, cannot appreciate the bliss of solitude and of being in the arms of nature. But I, I don't think you can say that uh, it is a result of, of the lack of freedom. Uh, you know, before. Uh, in the United States, I, I felt that they do not have too much freedom. But the thing uh, that sometimes sometimes bothered me was the was the fact they I mean as you said they they do not uh, know how to enjoy the the true happiness. But I think it is a lack of intellectual capacity to use their freedom properly. But your point is rather Ava that there is a pressure for social conformity I that people so. should be like other people, as Minji said, yes, yes. they have I to have so. dates, and if they don't have, they have to lie about it to yeah, say they I have dates. So. But, you know, you know no, nobody forces me to, to, go out, to go out, I mean, with a girl or a boy. But what, I mean, what makes the person that he's compelled to go out is the, the lack of com uh, intellectual com capacity and the part you, of that person. Do you think so that's, the, that's a sign of intellectual capacity that he goes she let me or just sharpen this dating let me so just sharpen I mean, this point of difference between you you say there is a pressure towards social conformity that doesn't leave people as free as they should be to develop their own individuality yes, you mean. say it's not the pressure for social conformity it's just the lack of intellectual ability to deal with the freedom you've got well but in, you know uh, in most cases in most um, american students i found that they like to go out and I found very few people who do not want, want to go out but feel compelled to go out uh, because of the you know, conformity. And but I then, think yes. uh, in the case of the few people who, I mean, who feel in that way, it is definitely the lack of intellectual capacity. Do you think, so don't you think there are some um, students who are brilliant and I can say who are really interested in school work in America, who would much rather sit at home and do some work or go for a, a, a long, lonely walk, as you've just said, and enjoy nature, but who don't do that because they're afraid of what um, their schoolmates would think about them? Yes, that is why I, I think Americans are queer people. I mean, no, I mean, uh, America is, a, is, a, is an absolutely free country and nobody forces me to go out, but they, they feel compelled to go out because because, I mean, in my opinion, it is, it is a, a definite lack of uh, intellectual capacity. Well, For instance, I, 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 wouldn't go out, I wouldn't go out if I don't, I don't feel like, like going out, uh, I mean, no, no matter what other, other people say. You know, uh, when, when I, I, was, uh, I was always taking a walk around the George School campus, people thought I was queer. <laughs> but I didn't mind. <laughs> I, I, felt, I felt quite happy. Let's give Nasreen a chance on this. Well, um, I wouldn't say that, say, because... Um, I talked to many American boys and girls and I told them how our Eastern customs were and I said, well, we don't date at all and we don't meet boys at all. And uh, after my conversation with these people, I said, I turned to an American boy and I said, well, what do you think of an Eastern girl? He said, I think you're a perfect square. <coughs> I said, well, now you'll have to explain me what a square means first. So another boy said, well, he means a prude, an English prude. So that means that well, if I don't date, I'm an American, I mean, I'm a square, as the American says. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't date, too, so, so we're all <laughs> squares. <laughs> well, your point is very interesting, but what has it to do with the, with the conformity and freedom? I'm just, make it clear? No, I'm just saying that here it's so conventional to do everything, and, and people have so much freedom to do it here. I mean, everything is done. And when we don't do it there, they are sort of aghast, mm, yes. horrified that we yes, don't do Nestor, it. Do you remember when we had the panel at Scott, when I asked them the question, said, why do you attach so much importance to dating? And if nobody could give me an answer out of a school of 600. Yes. We just <laughs> talked about dating. Everybody asked me about dating, whether we went dating. I had the question about 100 times. But I asked them, 600 of them, just once, 
Why do you attach so much importance to dating? Why and do you attach so, so much, much importance, importance to, to dating, dating in the United States? And nobody could answer. Just it was just that. This and because that was it. That and they couldn't give me an answer. To get used to the opposite sexes. I said, <laughs> couldn't you get used to them without going dating? After all, you were in a co-ed school. And they said, well, well, and nobody could give me a straightforward answer as I gave them when they asked me questions. Have you found an answer yourself yet? No, I haven't, <laughs> and I do wish you can tell, you can give me an answer now. Can you? Well, uh, <laughs> maybe some, uh, some of you have an idea. Well, <coughs> uh, if, if you don't mind, I want to change the direction, and uh, I'm, I would like to explain the, my statement that Americans are queer. Good. I think you should explain your statement that Americans are queer. Uh, I, I read in a book and, and sympathized with the author. I don't rem remember the name, but she's a can Canadian, and said Americans are queer because they don't, uh, they don't know how to rest. They build a... Because they don't know how to rest. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> they they build uh, large large buildings for recreation and and uh, make many facilities, but they do not know how to uh, rest. They are queer because they do not know how to read. They print more books than any other country, but they don't they don't know how to read. They are queer because they don't know how to sing. <laughs> Their song is just it it is not a music. It just sounds funny. <laughs> It is a, just a sort of fashion. It, it, it does not have has the quality to endure ages. And they are queer because they don't damn anybody. Everybody say, everybody say that Americans are wrong in this way and this way. And they say, they say well, uh, we, are, we are glad to accept your criticism. But we say, uh, we say our criticism, they just forget about it. And they don't mind. You do find that Americans are more interested in criticism and willing to accept it than other people's I are? I think so, yes, Mrs. Maybe Royer. They are. Among all the people that I've met here, I think the Americans take criticism more, uh, well, uh, nicely than the, any other person I've met in the world. And then, I think this question, how do you like America, is one of the, one of the, oh, it shows that they want to know what other people think of them, and if they are, if they are forbidden to ask the question, how do you like America, they say, yes, but honestly, what do you think about our country? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody asked you, yeah. how do you, I told them not to in yeah, your whole school. Down, right? Well, I told you they turned it into, how do you like it here? Yeah. And then what do you say, Minji? I oh. said, where? <laughs> <laughs> but and, then, you know, and then they stopped it when they saw that the teacher was listening. <laughs> you, you know, that question is quite natural. It can't be, I mean, it, yes, it is not a monopoly. It is quite natural. I would ask yeah. that question if they come to Korea. Yeah, that's quite natural. It's just the same, then, though. But it's a nice weather today. That's the beginning of conversation. Well, I hope you'll have some answers, though. By the time you go home, people will probably ask you the same thing, don't you think? <laughs> I think so, yes. yes. Uh, we've got to begin to sum up our discussion. I'm sorry, because we've hit so many high points, and we haven't quite covered them all. If I can just sum up briefly, you have first talked about uh, relations between students and teachers yes. and whether that affects learning, also about whether co-education is good or bad for the learning process. You've all reacted to the way we behave with our parents here. You have said that sometimes we have too much freedom and that in other ways we don't have enough freedom. We have a social pressure to conform. Uh, I wonder now, in concluding our discussion, there's one question I'd like to ask each of you based on what not some of you, you like said. America, no, not how do you like America. I won't ask that. I'd like to ask this. If you had one gift that you could give the American people, that your people possess, and that you think American people don't have, what would that gift be? Is that a fair question? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> well um, Mrs. Waller, I think that I could give the American woman, especially, modesty. I find that it's a bit lacking here. And another thing I can give them is relaxation and time to think, to rest, to, well, to have a good time with nature, as Peg says. And, to, well, to have a, a quiet time with himself, to rest. Yes, I think they should think more, observe more, talk less, and for heaven's sake, rush less. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I want to tell them that they have such a precious heritage, namely freedom, and I want, I want them to stick to their, this precious heritage 
with pride, courage, and faith. Oh, <clears throat> and I think they, they will uh, utilize this freedom properly. As in, as in case of you know, conformity, they would use it, uh, as Nasrin told us, by facing themselves and facing God and nature. So, uh, and I think then their, free, uh, their freedom will be used better and their happiness will be rich and broadened. It's sometimes said that Finland is a country where it is space for a grown-up man's breathe. Where there is space for a grown-up man's breathe. For a grown-up man to breathe. Mm. And I would like to give that to Americans, especially for people in New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ava. We all appreciate that. You've been listening to four students from four countries discussing, do American children have too much freedom? They were Nasri Namad from Pakistan, Minjiba Karibo from Nigeria, Nachung Pek from Korea, and Ava Leitinen from Finland. Next week, at this time, another group of forum delegates will be discussing the question, does the key to peace in this century lie with the non-white peoples?